Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, as uh, lesson plan is, uh, we're going to look at uh, Mrs. Uh, French. Uh, her car, she believes that uh, the, sh the struts or the shocks have been leaking and that her car is uh, riding real rough over bumps. And, um, and she would like us to take a look at the, uh, the struts on the vehicle or the shocks. So on the board here, I have um, a bit of a lesson plan on what we're going to inspect and things we're going to inspect and things that uh, we should look at before we condemn the shop. So uh, the first thing we have is we don't have to, uh, in red here, we don't have to take apart the shop, the shop or the shock to inspect it. Um, a light film of oil is normal on these things. Uh, to a certain extent, um, this is from uh, information that I found from my dealership. Um, what happened was is they were changing lots of shocks for no reason. So people sometimes get their vehicles undercoated, they have oil on their shocks, and they, they think, uh, guys at the dealership and swapping out shocks, thinking that they were um, leaking. So um, this is something we really have to look at. So the some things we're going to watch before we go in the shop, the shop is how to we'll refer to our lifting and jacking handout that uh, I passed out the previous uh, class we had. And we also have the wheel removal and installation uh, handout that I passed uh, out last period as well. So we're going to look at those before we go into the shop. Um, our first thing is this little diagram uh, of a shock here. Uh, there's a few other. This comes uh, from the dealership, things they want us to look at. So I'll get uh, little Johnny here to read the first, uh, the first example of a strut. Go, little Johnny. Oil or fluid residue only on the bottom of the lower shock absorber strut tube or other area not originating from the shaft seal is not a shock absorber absorber strut related problem. Do not replace the shock absorber strut. Look for other external leaks. Okay, so this is a typical uh, situation you would find in the shop. You would get a shock with a bit of oil or a strut or a shock with a bit of oil at the bottom. Uh, typically where a shock will leak is right up here at the shaft where the seal is on the edge of the shaft. It'll get all oily and uh, you'll see the leak from there. Something like this could be a power steering hose leaking on a shock. It could be a different kind of maybe brake fluid, a, a line busted leaking on a shock, or like I said earlier, undercoating. That would be a typical, uh, what a shock would look like. Uh, that's not a leaky shock, but something, a, a leak from something else. So our second picture here, what do we have here, little Johnny? Um. Light film residue on the normal absorber strut tube, but not on the spring seat and originating from the shaft seal is a normal condition. Do not replace the sock absorber strut. So this again, uh, it's not originating from the top. It's not leaking from the top. So if you could see a shock like that, you're trying to look somewhere else. Um, and you would not condemn a shock like that. So now here we go into what a bad shock looks like. So here you can see the oil is leaking from the top of the seal right at the edge. And it's leaking down the shock. So in this, in this uh, picture here, you got an oil drip or trail down from the shock absorber or strut tube. And it originates from the shaft seal. This is, not, this is an abnormal condition and you must replace the shock. So what would happen here in the shop, you'd look at the shock, there would be a spring spun around here with your mount up here. What you'd be looking at is for, you would lift the dust boot and you would find that it is full of oil in here and leaking down. That's a sign of a bad shock and it must be replaced. Here's another one here. Another sign, let's get little Johnny to read this one. An extreme wet film of oil covering a sock absorber strut tube 
and cooling in the spring sea and originating from the sasters in abnormal condition to place the sock absorber strap. So like little Johnny said here, when you, when you're looking at it, you would have oil pooling in the spring, uh, the spring perch, and it would be oil leaking again down from the seal area down the shock. Leaks down here, it could pull up here and leak down here. That's possible that you will see that too. And a lot of the times, Ooh. it'll be covered all with sand from road road debris. But you have to always make sure that you check that that it's coming from the top seal. Okay? Is that clear? Little Johnny, you got all that? Okay. Okay? So, like we've seen in uh, picture one and two, uh, oil leaks that don't come from the seal, they can provide from something else, another leak, an external leak from something else in the motor. It could be brake, uh, brake fluid. It could be many things. Uh, we do not change shocks for that. Uh, if equipped with an electronic, so it's things you'll see sometimes in new vehicles these days, if equipped with electronic suspension control system, ensure the system is working properly and has no DTC. So this will have to use an actual scan tool and scan the vehicle to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay? So the last uh, little red uh, uh, comment here is something we'll do once the vehicle is back on the ground. So now after we checked all the shocks, we're going to put the wheels back on. We're going to torque them properly like we learned in the star pattern. We're going to lower the vehicle and we're going to bounce it. So we'll go to each corner of the vehicle and we'll push down three times on the vehicle. Once we, we let off, we'll watch if, if the vehicle cycles more than two times, we need to replace the shocks. It means the shocks are finished and they're not doing their job anymore. In a normal condition, you should push on the front of a vehicle or the back end and it should, after you're done pushing on it, it should bounce or jounce two, no more than two times. So that's something else we're going to look uh, we're going to look into. So we're going to go over our wheel and tire installation procedure. Uh, we went through this, uh, we go through this every time we go in the shop. Uh, the proper torque sequence of a star pattern. We always go across from each other uh, when we torque a wheel. Uh, when you remove it, it doesn't matter something we have to make sure we do. And then we also have to make sure that we use a torque wrench. Little Johnny, you remember how to use a torque wrench? Yes? No, you forgot, okay. So here we go. Um, what we're gonna be wearing in the shop today is steel toe boots for personal protective equipment. Steel toe boots, safety glasses. Uh, we're gonna wear coveralls, and if some of you want, we can wear gloves if you don't wanna get your, your hands dirty. I have lots of gloves in the shop. We're gonna be lifting and jacking the vehicle uh, together. Uh, we remember that we always have to make sure that the pads are on a flat area of the frame and they do not contact any of the panels because uh, we don't wanna scratch paint. We don't wanna uh, dent doors, fenders. Uh, whatever the case may be. So before we lift the vehicle up, I will be the one to inspect to make sure that your vehicle is jacked properly. So let's go into the shop and let's start working on Mrs. French car and see if she needs shocks. Is, does everybody understand? Yes, can I hear a yes? Yes, here. Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's go. Okay.